interesting you mentioned those pressure points. I'd like you to kind of elaborate on those pressure points and how you think we can solve some of the problems that they, they bring up. Thank you very much for having me. We discussed in the report that the economy is now expanding um, in line with our population growth rate. If our uh, economy is growing at about 1.9% and our population is growing at close to 30%, it's not growing, it's not expanding to ensure that it lifts enough Nigerians from poverty. And some of these things that you see reflected in the high unemployment rates that we have in Nigeria. Some of the things that we think the government can, the, can do is actually to ensure that we remove the delays, administrative delays in licenses and then approvals, particularly on the landed property to encourage you know, constructions and then housings and to also uh, uh, stimulate the development of um, agriculture. If you do not have that on time, it takes long time and it costs a lot of money, people are not going to be encouraged to do that. We also think that the issues we've been discussing between, uh, for a very long time, which has to do with the infrastructure in the country, we think government needs to partner with the private sector. It doesn't have enough money to improve the infrastructure in the country. We have a lot of deficits, both in terms of um, road, appropriate transport network, and mm -hmm. even in housing units, deficit that we have in the country. So government needs to involve the private sector to look for a creative way to do that. Government needs to invest in the ex sector. There are a lot of uh, people who are traveling out of this country for medical tourism, and it puts a lot of pressure on foreign exchange. exchange. Then the government needs to also look at how they can improve the standard of education, particularly in the public sector, such that, again, it can also reduce a lot of money that we spend, a lot of money we spend on going abroad for education, and even help to reduce the money that Nigerians are spending on you know, private education. So these are few areas, and of course, in the real estate uh, industry. Yeah, because I, I was actually going to get into that for my conversation with Yasmin earlier. She was talking about you know the construction sector in Nigeria. And I'm looking at it, that sector contracted by about 6% in 2016, grew um, grew, rebounded and came up, grew 1% in 2017. And then last year we saw that it was up about, about almost 2.3%. Uh, uh, when you look at what needs to be done in that sector, because I see it's, it's listed as one of your pressure points, what do you think is the potential for real estate in driving our economy? Okay, so that sector is very important in two ways in Nigeria. Of course, there is a linkage between the real estate development and the construction development. Construction is a little bit different in terms of because, because it involves roads, involves rail, and all of those things, factory um, construction. But in real estate, it's labor intensive. So with appropriate policies in place, it can help the government to reduce the high unemployment rate we have in the country. It doesn't only provide jobs for skilled laborers, it provides jobs also for unskilled labor. So the, you know, the apprentices, the the bricklayers, the plumbers, and across the spectrum, you have professionals, real estate uh, consultants, lawyers, and so that ancillary businesses. Yeah, so that it also has a multiply impact on the manufacturing sector in terms of you know, stimulate the development in um, demet, de, um, cement manufacturing, which also is another labor intensive sector of the economy. So, what do we think the government needs to do? Number one, the approver. The removal of administrative delays in granting license is number one. Number two, then the government also needs to, at least starting from the federal workers, state workers, grant loans, mortgage loans to them at concessionary rates. Today in Nigeria, if you go to any commercial banks or any um, mortgage bank, the average interest rate you have in that sector is about 17, 18, 21 percent. You can't develop a real estate industry with that kind of interest rate. You think about it, that you buy 50 million um, housing units, and then you think you're going to be paying 17, 20% interest rates annually. Mm -hmm. No one, no, that sector will not develop with that area. Okay. So we think if they provide such, it may stimulate the development of you know, affordable 
low housing, housing units for people. Units. Okay, I want to get into the other things as well. One is your outlook for inflation and also for the MPC. I see inflation you're calling that 11.31% for, yeah. for February. Yes, I think we think it's going to drop a little bit. And we released a note last week, Friday, to say that it defies um, electionary spending. Um, so we think it may likely drop from 11.37 to 11.31 in the month of February. But beyond that, two important factors need to happen f that may likely determine the outlook of inflation, mm -hmm. which we noted in that report. The adjustment to the PMS pump price, number two, the adjustment to electricity tariffs. If those, and we think those adjustments are very, very important now, such that they will be able to stimulate investment in that area. A lot of, I mean, it's only an NPC that is important here into Nigeria today. And the government is paying a lot of money to ensure that we buy it at 145 today mm. because land, of course, is far higher than that. Last year, I think we estimated over close to a trillion naira that would have been lost into that area. And of course, you also note that the exchange rate with which they are importing uh, PMS to Nigeria right. today is about 306, 305 naira to a dollar. That needs to change. Number two, the fact that you need to ad, um, adjust the electricity tariff to reflect the reality to encourage investment in the area. But if those things are done, we think it may likely have about 250 basis points to inflation rate we have, which we call temporary pain and permanent gains for Nigerian economy. Okay, but finally, your, your outlook for the MPC. I think they are going to maintain, we think they're going to maintain the current status quo. Um, there is still, we think there is still a little bit of fragility in foreign exchange market. Um, inflation, uh, reducing rates at this current level mm. may discourage both current um, local investors and then foreign investors in taking advantage of the yield in the Nigerian market. So a stable, a tight policy at the current level is appropriate for the NPC. All right.